uh, there are several pitfalls that can uh, affect your evaluation uh, and the sensitivity of your ACL examination. Well, we know that the Lachman test is uh, the most uh, sensitive test, but you can have fake or pseudo Lachmans if you actually miss the diagnosis of a posterior cruciate ligament injury. You'll have laxity, but actually what you're missing is a posterior sag rather than an anterior translation of the tibia. Uh, other potential pitfalls include an associated medial collateral ligament injury so that now actually the tibia is rotating around the medial collateral ligament instead of truly assessing the anterior translation. The third potential pitfall is an associated large posterior horn meniscus tear that can cause subtle anterior posterior translation. The pivot shift test is a highly specific test to evaluate for ACL injury. The problem is, is that it actually creates a significant rotational clunking sensation if done improperly can actually cause spasm and pain for the patient and may make it difficult for the orthopedic surgeon or the doctor who's going to make the definitive diagnosis. So I encourage people to use the pivot shift uh, when they're good at it. And so I would, I would suggest practicing it until you're very good at it, otherwise defer it uh, to the specialist. Uh, the, best, the best place to practice uh, can be in a clinic when you have a patient who's already proven to have an unstable ACL. Uh, they, another doctor has made the diagnosis or diagnosis by MRI. And the best of all worlds is in the operating room with the patient asleep. Uh, go visit your orthopedic surgeon before they're doing ACL reconstructions and practice your pivot there. It's the easiest way to, get the, uh, to learn the exam. Combined injuries are very difficult to address. Uh, one, they're virtually catastrophic. Uh, you must evaluate neurovascular function on every single one. If a person injures more than two ligaments about their knee, we have to be worried about the potential of a knee dislocation. In terms of assessing the structures, the, uh, it often they overlap, so you're going to be significantly more lax anterior and PCL and a PCL injured knee, and sometimes it makes it difficult to isolate which one uh, is injured. So with multiple ligament injured knees, I virtually always will get an MRI scan. The most common of all combined injuries uh, associated with ACL injuries is the medial collateral ligament injury. Uh, fortunately, the medial collateral ligament usually heals by itself, where the ACL sometimes requires surgical reconstruction. The classic example of the terrible triad, which was described as an ACL, MCL, and medial meniscus tear is actually less common than the association of an ACL, MCL, and lateral meniscus tear acutely. Mechanism of injury is key to evaluating knee injuries. You must understand the history, but specifically the mechanism. A valgus force of the knee with the foot planted most commonly will cause a medial collateral ligament injury. Secondarily, it may also associate with an ACL injury. With a varus force of the knee, now getting hit from the inside part, the first thing it gives is going to be the lateral collateral ligament in the posterior lateral corner. From a hyperextension injury, so now the, the knee actually goes backwards, usually the posterior capsule gives way first, followed by the posterior cruciate, and then the ACL. Clearly one of the most common mechanisms of injury uh, about the knee we see in twisting and cutting sports, where a person plants their foot, twists and rotate over the top, they feel a pop and have an acute knee hemarthrosis. This is the classic mechanism for an ACL injury.